This week on All Around Music, King's Gambit joins us in the studio for an interview. Welcome back. We're back in it. Yeah. Episode back 44. In the G&G studio. Ha <laughs> 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 ha. Ha ha. Oh yeah, no Will Smith in the studio. No Will Smith, <laughs> bud. That ain't cool. Almost broke the, own, the, the only rule we have. <laughs> she. Ha <laughs> ha. Damn it. <laughs> it. It's just so fun to do. Oh. I can't help it. Yeah. The room's put back together. We got it cleaned up and organized. Yes, it looks awesome. Got all the band tees on the wall. We do. I like them. Band tees behind those tees on the canvas. I think we were talking about getting some, some foam. More yeah. Local band tees. Yeah, we we were talking about that before the show. <laughs> uh, have some local band tees. Put them over the canvas like we do, like we got with the other tees. Mm-hmm. Um, that'd be awesome. Just yeah. to. Visually show our support, you know, because we're gonna get that. We're getting that camera. It's true. We're getting that camera. We gonna That's get that camera. Gonna get it. Gonna get it. <laughs> gonna get. Gonna get it. <laughs> gonna get. Got it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, definitely keep a don't don't forget about that live episode for our one year. Mm-hmm. August twenty fifth. Mm-hmm. Took the day off work. I need to do that. I keep forgetting. So that's gonna be a fun. fun we gotta figure out what time, time we're gonna start that. Hmm. Well, I mean, if we're off work, mm-hmm. we could start any time. Yeah, we gotta let our guests know though. Well, well yeah. <laughs> we could just sit here and stare at the camera until the first guests show up. Yeah, we could make it really awkward. That'd be fun. Make a bunch of weird noises. Uh, Take our shirts off. You don't want to see that, <laughs> <laughs> especially mine. <laughs> it's like a forest. <laughs> moving on <laughs> <laughs> yeah so this uh this week we got king's gambit they came in did an interview with us Mm-hmm. so i look forward to listening to that yeah you gotta you gotta stick it out i'm not gonna give it to you right away gotta stick it out yeah <laughs> you gotta stick it out <laughs> uh, yeah that's definitely coming up so you'll be able to hear that great guys yeah um brought some music with them good music good mm-hmm. tunes mm-hmm but yeah, so uh, the local spotlight this week, Monday, June twelfth, Steel City Jug Slammers will be performing at Sixth Street Dive. The show starts at eight p.m. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Um, just to be clear, usually I put the prices on here, but I looked and scoured and I couldn't find a price anywhere. So I apologize if you go to that and they charge you at the door. Always bring cash. Yeah, just bring some cash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tuesday, June thirteenth. Goya, Destroyer of Light, and Void King will be performing at the Lafayette Theater and Events Center. Doors open at 7 p.m. Show starts at 8 p.m. $5 cover. Nice. Uh, Friday, June 16th, the Doom Room of Lafayette and Lafayette Theater present Rat King, Knives Are Quiet, and uh, Sons of Ra will be performing at the Lafayette Theater and Events Center. Doors open at 8. Show starts at 9. $5 cover. Nice. Mm hmm. <clears throat> Another Friday, June 16th show, John Till will be performing at the 6th Street Dive. Show starts at 10. Once again, couldn't find couldn't find any uh, information if there's a cover, so just bring some cash with you, just in case. Well, yeah, you know, and always, you know, buy the music. Well, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, Saturday, June 17th, Haystack will be, be performing at the Hideaway along with uh, Mike Bradley, Silence, TC, and Lord Rain. Tickets are on sale uh, at the Hideaway, $15 general admission, $30 VIP. Doors open at 6 p.m. Show starts at 8. Yeah, if you can go to that, go. Because, uh, you know, hometown here, Mike Bradley's going to be there. Mm-hmm. I was talking to him about it. Um, Haystack, apparently, is someone who he idolized growing up. So he gets to perform with him. That's kind of like fulfilling a dream. Right. That's pretty awesome. Right. That would be like if I got to play with Thrice. 
Yeah. Honestly, I'd probably die of a heart attack before <laughs> the opportunity. <laughs> You'd be peeing yourself. <laughs> I would. Like, don't worry about the pee. That'll dry. <laughs> <laughs> they leave the show and they're like, that dude was so weird. Yeah, he pissed himself. <laughs> You'll see an interview somewhere, <laughs> like on Rolling Stone. <laughs> and it's Dustin Kincher. He's like, yeah, dude, I played this show one time and this dude pissed himself in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've met him once before. I didn't piss myself, but I did stumble over my words a lot. So then he'd be like, I met the guy one other time, and he was <laughs> real fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. I was totally fanboying. Couldn't help it. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so uh, another show, Saturday, June 17th, Lloyd Avenue will be performing at the Lafayette Theater and Event Center. Show starts at 8 p.m., Go to the Lafayette Theater and Event Center Facebook page to find the tickets. And another June seventeenth. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a big one. The thirty sixth annual t- Taste of Tippecanoe in downtown Lafayette runs four p.m. to midnight, featuring artists and bands T.J. Rosa, which we featured mm-hmm. uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, three weeks ago. Yeah, forty two episode forty two. Yeah. Um, Waltz for Venus, Bruce Barker, uh, Michael Kelsey, and Green Room Rockers, and many more. Go to the taste of typicanoe.org to see the full list uh, and for more information about it all. Taste is always a good time. So. It is. <clears throat> Definitely get those pre-sale tickets because you'll save save some pennies. Mm-hmm. I just I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it. I was going. I wanted to go. Yeah. But I forgot I bartend Saturday nights. So. Yeah, I won't be able to go. I'll be out of town actually. So unless somebody will cover for me, which they probably won't. Right. Like, I want to go to the taste. I want to go to the taste. Oh, sweet. So that means no <laughs> one's going to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, we'll be dead that night. Right. Well, then you can close at nine, like 10 minutes after you get there. And then maybe I can go. There you go. Yeah. I still might be able to make it. There you go. <laughs> yeah, definitely. If you're going to that, uh, you're going to have a good time. Yeah. It's always a good time. Yeah, I like the taste. It's always yeah, fun to walk uh, around. You're, you're, it's guaranteed you're going to see 14 people you didn't want to see, but you'll have a good time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just walk on the other side of the street. Yeah. They'll and be then, like, hey. You'll be like, mm, no. There, there's a sea of people here. Not happening. I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, Nine Inch Nails will have a new EP out this summer with another to follow according to Trent Reznor. Yeah. That's got to be tough. Like, How are you going to pull that off? I don't know. They will. It's nine inch nails. Yeah, that's true. It's nine inch nails. They'll pull it off. Yeah. Uh, Keep a Breast Foundation has teamed up with Neck Deep for VIP Warp Tour experience, hmm. where one lucky fan and a friend will be flown out to Las Vegas to enjoy a day with the band and more. To enter, fans are to text Neck Deep to four one four 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 to donate ten dollars in support of Keep a Breast and be entered to win the ultimate VIP fan experience. Every donation you make counts as an entry. Nice. So you could donate 50 bucks. There's five entries. Hmm. Save, you, save the boobies. Yeah, save the boobies. <laughs> I wonder how that always, like, you see these things where you can spend the time with the band. What do you guys, what do they do, you think? I don't know. Like, do you go out to dinner? What do you? <laughs> I don't know. I've always wondered. What Are you like, hey, my, my name's Kevin, and, um... I really like your music. I like your music. Okay, see you later. See you guys. <laughs> no, no, Kevin, Kevin, come here, come here. Yeah, just, you can you can hang out in here. Just uh, just like sit over in that corner. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk. Yeah, just just don't talk. I mean, you can talk if you want to, but raise your hand. But not to us. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Th- th- thank you. My name's Kevin. Do you guys want to get some beers? You, you guys want you guys want Zima water? <laughs> I've always wondered about those things. Where I'm, you... I'm sure that's not what happens. Well, like, I'm sure there's somebody that's like super nervous, you know, in that kind of situation. It's gotta but... be awkward. Oh yeah, how can it not? I've like, always... what do you say? Be like, hey, I like your music. Uh, hope you guys are cool, and not dickheads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder if they plan things. Like... Save a titty. Save a titty. <laughs> <laughs> do you think when they were like coming up with the name for that foundation, they had like a list? Like one of them was save a titty. And they're like, so. they're like, no, we can't use that. <laughs> Save breastuses. Nope, can't. I should stop because I'm probably just making the situation worse. <laughs> yeah, keep a breast foundation. So Rings of Saturn have announced a release, release date for their new album. The album is called... I didn't do that on purpose, I swear. Altu Ola? Yeah. 
and will release July 28th. My birthday. Nice. Happy birthday to me. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so the weekend donated 100000 to Medical Center in Uganda. Hmm. Nice. I was like, that's cool. That's pretty crazy. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> the British Red Cross raised over $3 million during the Manchester Benefit concert, bringing a total raise to $12 million. So. That's pretty sweet. Mm-hmm. Pretty sweet. Hats off to you, gents, that and ladies mm-hmm. that uh, donated to make that happen. Yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Childish Gambino says his next album will be his last. What? Yeah. His last one's pretty good. Yeah, they're all really good. Yeah. Donald Glover. I wonder why he's doing that. I don't know. I know he has. I think he has a new TV show coming out. Yeah. They got picked up by Fox or somebody, and he's gonna be, uh, he's gonna be playing Lando Carlisian in the uh, Han Solo prequel movies. Hmm. So he's probably got a hefty schedule ahead of him. He'll probably come back. Yeah, he'll point. come back. Be like, check this out. Drop the album. Everybody, <laughs> everybody's heads explode. <laughs> oh my god! I think it's cool. He uses a uh, different name for his music. Yeah, and instead of like, check it out. I'm Donald Glover. <laughs> because people probably wouldn't listen to it. (laughs) For the longest time, I had no idea that was Donald Glover. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't remember. I mean, I found out a while ago, but I didn't. Yeah, somebody was like, yeah, Childish Gambino is Donald Glover. I was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) And it made me want to listen to it even more. Nice. So some upcoming tours. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. PVRS have announced a fall headlining tour, and they've also announced that a portion of every ticket sold will be donated to the Alley Coalition in support of LGBTQ equality. Um, they'll be in Indianapolis um, July 5th mm-hmm. at the Old National Center. Goes to a good cause, it's a good venue. Yeah. And I actually listen to them. Yeah. I still it's not bad. I still need to do that. It's not bad. I keep forgetting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Galactic Empire, the Star Wars themed metal band, have nice. announced a summer tour with Danger Kids. Nice. They'll be in Chicago July 18th at the Bottom Lounge. Nice. Yeah, I really want to. That'd be so cool to go to. <laughs> Just be standing there. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that'd be cool. Show. Right. Um, U2 have, has extended their Joshua Tree 30th anniversary tour. They'll be in Indianapolis on um, September 10th at the Lucas Oil Stadium. Um, I don't really care for U2 that much. I'm not going to lie. They have a couple songs that I'm like, I like these. Yeah. But it's like they're older, older stuff. But them tickets are expensive. Yeah, dim tickets. Dim tickets. Dim ticks. Uh, Lucas Oil? Yeah. Stadium tour? Yeah, your nosebleed tickets are probably going to be like 100 bucks, at least. That's crazy. Yeah. I can't see the band, but my nose is totally bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> Crown the Empire have announced a headlining summer tour, and they are coming nowhere near Indiana. Hmm. Sucks to suck. <laughs> it's Indiana though the gym class heroes are back after releasing their last album the Papercut Chronicles 2 in 2011 the band have announced for uh, the band have announced for Sail Across the Sun Music and Wine Festival at Sea that's a mouthful <laughs> <laughs> it will uh, take place March 7th through the 11th 2018 they will sail from New Orleans to Cozumel Mexico that would be awesome right you get to see gym class heroes there is one downfall. Hmm. Train is playing. Hmm. Is it who else? Do you know who else is playing on that by any chance? Um, it wasn't a big list, so I didn't think it was that important to put on there. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, that <laughs> la- <laughs> You're like, that's right. <laughs> that's, a, that's all right. But, oh. Uh, that last one we talked about a while back, um, about the, it was like the hip hop cruise. Oh, yeah. And that was expensive. I looked at the prices. What was it? I don't remember now, but it was. I want to say it was like eight hundred dollars or something. Like if you shared a room with somebody. Next. <laughs> and that didn't like that wasn't with like a drink package or anything. Like and you had wow. to buy like the drink package packages are like two hundred dollars. So there's a thousand already. Yeah. To share a room Plus with a stranger. Plus fees. You have fees with these things. Oh man. And stuff. So. Plus, if you don't have a passport, then you got to get a passport. Well, yeah, but I wasn't counting that. Right. <laughs> That's only like fifty bucks. Uh, yeah, if you do the slow process, which if you're not in any hurry to get it. Right. Four years later. No, it doesn't take that long. You need to do it? Where are you going? 
I don't know. I just didn't have one when I won that cruise last oh. time. And I You're know. like, I don't have a passport, but I do have a gun. <laughs> Can but I bring I, will, this with me? Will that get me on? <laughs> it's registered. And that's all you need, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to I don't this. have a passport. No, I file the serial numbers off all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Scoot's chair over farther away. <laughs> Um, but no, that I want to go on one of those cruises, like these cruises where there's like this. Yeah, that'd be sweet. This kind of thing going on. Because, gym class heroes, that'd be a cool. Yeah, one. that'd be awesome to go see. When's the last time gym class heroes performed anything? I don't know. Like 2012. Probably. I don't. Know. Yeah. Holy shit, that would be insane. Like, what if you didn't know, and you were on this this cruise, and like all of a sudden gym class heroes starts playing? I'd lose my shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, know you would, because I know you like gym class yeah, heroes. Oh yeah. When I went on that cruise, the music sucked. <laughs> you're like, yeah. yeah, I remember because you were watching football instead of what you never do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Catching up on some games. It was the only game I watched last year. These NBA playoffs are insane. <laughs> <laughs> it was Steelers and something else. I don't even remember. Steelers versus Steelers. This is crazy. <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> and Steel Panthers playing. <laughs> Not on the cruise. That would have been all. That would be awesome. Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> be a drunken fest <laughs> yeah the music sucked on the cruise i was on like it was terrible it was terrible i'd love to go on one of these ones where it's like an actual like band playing right and it blows your mind do they play like every night or something i wonder like i don't know i wonder how that works I wonder if they're like just play one night and they hang out on the cruise and <laughs> I don't they know. play one night and they're like all right bring in the helicopter let's get off this thing right because it's like a four nights or something right normally well i guess maybe maybe this is a short cruise where it's only like two nights or something yeah i mean that's not a big cruise you're from mine was four days right. i think i mean they're only sailing from uh new orleans to cozumel yeah so, yeah that might just be one of those weekend cruises they do those where like you leave what are you doing this weekend day. oh me and my wife sean that we're going on a cruise <laughs> We're going to see gym class here. Right? Yes. <laughs> 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 it might not that be that expensive if it's a short cruise. That's true. So I'm going right. to look. There you go. Next year. Next year. I need a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I need, like I take vacations from work, but they're like, I don't go anywhere because work doesn't pay me enough to take actual <laughs> vacations. <laughs> right. So I'm like, all right, vacation. I'll just sit at home. Yeah. <laughs> drink my sorrows away. <laughs> it's a new country song. So what's your album of the week, Matt? Well, this week I, uh, I've i been listening to a lot of City and Color. Oh, yeah? So I picked their album, If I Should Go Before You. came out in 2015. Nice. It's a good album. Uh, it's their latest album, so hopefully they'll have a new one soon. Yeah, it's a couple years old. So Yeah. They're probably working on something. Hopefully. What you been listening to? Um, I was doing some homework, listening to some Between the Barrier to Me, uh, Coma Up. <laughs> Ecliptic. <laughs> Ecliptic. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good that's album. That's a good one. Um, I never really listened to it through before. Like, I've listened to it, but it was like. Right. To me, it was always new BT Bam. So I never, like, I had a hard time getting into it. Right. But I finally sat down. I was working on homework. I was listening to the whole thing, and it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think one of my favorite albums from them is one of their, not their, not one of their latest newest ones. Um, it's it only has six songs on it. It's called uh, God, what's it called? Parallax. No, it's no, like uh, starts with a D. A D. Yeah, let me let me grab it here really quick. I don't know. I don't remember that one. Um, hmm. that's so good. So good. <laughs> I don't remember. Uh, B B B B. Between the Buried and Me, uh, The Great Misdirect. Oh, it isn't, that's not what you said. Right. I was, I was thinking of the song <laughs> Disease, Injury, and Madness. I say, it starts with a D. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, The Great Misdirect, sorry. <laughs> Don't, there's only six songs on there, but it's so good. Yeah. And it's an hour long with six well, songs. It's between the Buried and right. Me. Right. I mean. See, I mean, anytime you listen to Between the Buried and Me, you have to dedicate some time. <laughs> right. This yeah. one, actually, this, this album had a. Uh, like 12 or something songs something like that so you know it was a good full album right but kind of like stuff. Alaska was Alaska is the best oh. album there ever was Alaska that's a great <laughs> album yeah like that's just that's the one that has backwards marathon on it right uh, you know I don't know I don't remember now yeah, you, know. you put me on the spot here I got, I got it right here I'll just check I think it yes might, backwards yeah, okay. marathon yeah 
has like all bodies. Oh my god, the whole album's so good. Selkies, Alaska, yeah, Alaska, <laughs> Robo Turner, yeah, Backwards Marathon. Like it, when I can't think of something I want to listen to, I just put Alaska on. Yeah, like no joke. Like if I don't know what I want to listen to, I'll just listen to Alaska. And Colors, <clears throat> Colors is great. Oh too. man, God, I can't wait to go to that show. <laughs> Sold out. Yeah, I'm stoked. Is that in Chicago? Yep, it's at the Bottom Lounge. The bottom lounge. I, I, I always look up the venues because I like to see what they look like. Yeah. So I looked up the bottom lounge and I was kind of confused. Because I'm like, wait, where's this? it was on top of the building? Yeah. There's a <laughs> second floor and that's where the stage is. But it's like huge. Huh. But the only pictures I was seeing was uh, just the lounge itself. I'm like, where, I'm like where, where the hell are they going to play? There's no stage. And then eventually Google finally pulled up you know, the second half of the building. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. This makes sense. This makes sense. I was like, mm. no wonder it's sold out. You can fit like 50 people in there. Oh, really? But it's uh, it's pretty sweet. No, like the actual stage area, it's huge. But like the oh. lounge itself is small. Oh. Yeah. Gotcha. Interesting. Yeah. I'm just ready to go to the Incubus. Yeah, that too. And Third Eye Blind. Yeah. That's coming up soon. It's going to be good. Less than a month. You know it's less than a month? What's that? Gear Fest. Oh yes. Two weeks. Two I weeks. Think. I'm I'm pretty excited for that. Yeah. Um, Sweetwater. They've been doing a lot of giveaways on their Facebook page. Really? I, oh, yeah. Shoot, it's like I need to get on their Facebook. Yeah. It's uh, Win It Wednesday. Ow. Oh, dang Dude, it. I, I was so close to winning it this Wednesday because I I commented, and the person they picked commented two hours before me. How does it work? Is it random or? Yeah, it's just random. Oh. But I was like, I was ah, oh, that just made me feel really close. <laughs> and that one was it was a bunch of uh, recording software for like guitar nice. and everything, like because uh, I use that iRig Pro, so it was like software for that stuff. Nice. Yeah, I was like, oh, it was I've like done it. It was like sixteen hundred dollars software. I didn't know their Facebook did that. I've done it on their website where they have them, and I've gone and signed up. Yeah. And I gotta so, get on their Facebook. Yeah, I've been I've been doing them. I'm I like, can't wait to go there. I've never been there. That place looks yeah. awesome. Yeah, definitely want to go. Uh, I mean, we're going, but we're registered. God, I hope we get lanyards. That'd be sweet. I hope I get a freaking lanyard. Oh, it's gonna uh, be awesome. I'm gonna wear it for a week. So we we were talking. We were gonna go to that, um, because we have an interview with a band. I'm not gonna say who yet. Don't want to give it away. Got to right. got to keep the suspense. Mm-hmm. But we were gonna do that interview, and then the next day we're gonna go to Gear Fest, and then come back and finish finish the episode, so we could talk about Gear Fest. Yeah. So, should be a good time. We're probably doing a lot of Instagramming, you know. Live yeah, Facebook now we got the, feed. Yeah, we have the Instagram page now. So, yeah. we'll be, we can do like live Instagram. Yeah. From Gear Fest. That'd yeah. be perfect. Yeah. Sweet. That's, that seems, that, a lot of people seem to uh, use Instagram. Instagram. So, I just did it. Like, I have a personal one. But right. Yeah. I have that too. I didn't like ever really think about doing it with the podcast and then you made it. And yeah. Cause I didn't think people really used Instagram, but I guess they do. Yeah, I didn't. I don't ever use it that much. I used to. Right. I I think people actually use it more than Twitter, which a lot of people, from what I've heard, a lot of people don't use Twitter because they can't figure it out. Which I'll admit, Twitter's a little weird, but it's not as confusing as Skype. I'll just say that. (laughs) (laughs) Twitter is kind of just it's impersonal. It's very impersonal. Right. Because most of the time, people just follow. Yeah. Follow. And Twitter is really good for if you want to know what's like going on. Yeah, like right it's now. It's kind of like a live news feed of everybody's opinion. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Everybody has one. I don't know. I don't. I think Twitter is kind of cool, but it's kind of weird at the same time. It's like that saying: opinions are like assholes because everybody has one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Snapchat more than anything. Yeah, I share more with my friends on Snapchat than I do anywhere else. Yeah, I don't. I don't use Snapchat that much. It, I, I think I do it because like. Facebook or Instagram, it's like it's I want to send something. No, it's like I want to send like a funny picture. Oh yeah, I want to post it, but I don't really care that it's there a year later. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, right? Like I saw something funny today, and I'll send it to my friends, or I'll post it on my story on Snapchat. Right. And it's gone the next day, and that's fine. And you're like, eh, I don't care. I Memory's need, gone. I didn't need to put it on Facebook and see it for a week. Yeah. Pop up on this day on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. It's like I don't need that. I you just, said. This and this. I just thought this was kind of funny, so I'm gonna put it on Snapchat for for 24 hours. Yeah, that uh, on this day on Facebook thing, it's kind of terrifying because sometimes you're like, "Holy shit, I said that." <laughs> 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 totally, yeah. <laughs> you're like, "Why would I say that?" Me yeah. now would not say that. God, I was 
such a piece of shit. And you look at it and you're like, why would I say that? That's so stupid. <laughs> like me back then was a douche. <laughs> a lot of drunken nights back then. Yeah. So this week we have an interview with uh, Kings Gambit. Mm-hmm. So uh, we feature a song by them. Yes. So look forward to hearing that later in the episode. But um, yeah, check out this uh, little interview we did with them. It was great having them come by and chat with us here in person. Definitely. So great guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, give them some support. It's, yeah. It's definitely well deserved. So, uh, yeah. So joining us now in the studio, we got uh, Kings Gambit with us. How's it going, guys? Hey, man. How's it going How's good. Going? All right, you guys are from. Uh, from Attica, basically, yeah. based out of Attica, yeah. Yeah. Attica Lafayette. Awesome. So, uh, you want to tell us a little bit about your guys, uh, the band itself, uh, mainly how it was formed or how you guys came to be? Yeah, uh, it started out, um, me and Anthony, um, we kind of went through a lot of members. It was a totally different band at first. It was originally California Caller. I was going to play guitar and things didn't work out that way, so now I play drums. And then we got just a bunch of different members throughout the area, and I think we have a pretty solid lineup now. But uh, yeah, we're just a, a hardcore band based out of Attica, Lafayette, and we're working on a working to go record a new album here soon. It'll be our first full length. Uh, just in the process of that. Hell yeah. And uh, Anthony's the uh, vocalist? Yes. Yeah, he okay. couldn't make it today. He's uh, he's working. Oh, it's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> he's definitely the brain of yeah. the band. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. He does it's 90% all right. of everything. It's all right. We'll make it through. <laughs> I'm sure he'll listen. He's here in spirit, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so one of the guys is, uh, what are your main influences, I guess? Well, I mean, it depends. <laughs> um, every time I die... Um, Rage Against the Machine. Yeah. Straight from the Path. Norma Jean. Yeah. In that definitely. realm. Yeah. Nice. And, I mean, in like Maylene, even, I feel yeah, like for some of us. Definitely. I don't know. Definitely get into that. And if you go individually, we're all pretty well rounded, I feel yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> we all listen to a wide variety, but for this, for what we do, yeah, those bands are our, our main picks. Awesome. Any uh, non musical influence? Um, I'm, not, I'm, sure yeah. I'm sure there's plenty of them. For True Anthony, question, though, yeah. right? <laughs> for us, I don't know. I mean, I can't really think of anything that stands out to me. You know, I know Anthony writes a lot about like political things and religious yeah. things. It's just kind of whatever he has on his mind of the day. Right. More just you know, going against the norm, uh, paradigms that society's created, and just basically telling people to open your mind a little bit. And, Awesome. Right <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> so, uh, as a band, do you guys uh, remember the first song you played together? No, it's all uh, was it a cover? Was, Did, a, was it an original? Jack, or? Jekyll, Jekyll Island, Island, which we don't play anymore, but it was on our first EP. Oh, okay. That would be the first that was written. Yeah. Jekyll Island. Yep. It's uh, about the Federal Reserve. Nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you said political. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um. So how would you say music like affects the world around you guys? Uh, everything. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's definitely all I do. I mean, I'm sure for these guys, I feel the right. same. It's Music's basically yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. Right. All my extra time goes into that. So it's <laughs> like, it's a big it's part of my life. It, it's listening to it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gets you through the day. Yeah. I don't know how people go without listening to music. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> I yeah. know people like that. It's like, I can't get live? motivated. Yeah, it's like <laughs> you clean, you put on music. You know, right. Gotta, even for me, like taking a shower. You know. Yeah. yeah. Got a different music. album for a different part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> different genre. One's yeah. over. Time to go to something else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, showering with no music's weird. It is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's uh, you're in an awkward situation, so you're just like. Mm. <laughs> Just weirdly should put the stuff. music on. <laughs> Definitely like that comment, weirdly touching yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Colt over there. At least when you're jamming out, you're grooving and touching yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Just 
It's not as weird, right? Yeah. No. You're just vibing and dancing. And singing. With soap. Somebody, <laughs> somebody walks, what do you do? I'm showering. <laughs> Obviously. Leave me alone. Do you not see the soap? Well, I was just wondering because your clothes are still on. You, you want to up on the water bill? Pop on in. <laughs> so do you guys have a certain process when it comes to writing? Uh, Anthony's our main writer. He writes the guitar parts and for the most part, I mean, everybody pitches in, but he comes up with a basic idea usually. He writes the lyrics. Um, so he'll just bring it to practice and we'll jam it out. I'll come up with some drums and they'll put in their inputs and change little things here and yeah, there. Yeah, the last one we did was actually the first time that we'd written anything together. Yeah, Ben came up with the, the main riff and it just sprung from there. Like the last, what minute of it Anthony came up with and yep. Adam's even put his two cents in a few times. Yeah, it, a couple parts. It, it's fun being in a band where we're all friends and we can just, you know, just jam it out and, you know, feel free to put in our own inputs whenever we want. And we have a pretty good process, I think. Yeah. Hey, if it works, it works, right? Yeah, it works so So sometimes, as you were saying, you'll come in with a riff and you guys just go from there. Well, and I mean, other times, you just. I mean, I mean, me and Anthony have talked a lot about it. Like that's how we prefer to do things mm -hmm. I and mean, obviously he doesn't want to be the one writing everything you know, right it's a lot of stress on you when you're the one doing everything yeah that's true but up until recently you know it just worked out that way but now nice. i feel like if we go farther and start writing new stuff it'll be more everybody's input from the beginning you know it just makes it easier oh you know, yeah because you could come up with a riff and then somebody else comes up with another riff that you wouldn't think of you right know, that makes it sound completely different you know so mm -hmm. that's the best way why I like the new one, you know, the newer stuff that we're writing. Because even though Anthony, like the last one that we wrote before that, he wrote probably what 90% of it, I would say. Oh, yeah. But we even all started putting our own input in, you know, and changed it up. Right. So, so it's a full collaboration. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah definitely. Nice. So you guys kind of touched on it, but um, what are your songs typically about? Like, is it uh, pretty much, pretty much exactly that? Just, uh, you know open your mind from just your every you know your day-to-day -day norms um, you know we're pretty and it goes into religion too you know um, a lot of politics mm -hmm. just don't believe everything you hear research it yourself figure out who you are versus what you know society tells you to be I definitely feel like it's more to think outside the box. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Question, question everything is yeah. what it boils down to. Yeah. Don't be sheep, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Which, you know, we live in America. There's quite a bit of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's true. <laughs> Sometimes we're just comfortable like, I like what that guy did. I'm going to do that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's another thing when it comes to music, you know, we, we, we feel like there's, there's a lot of bands rising in popularity that just tend to sound the same and that's exactly what we try and stray away from we like to keep it as raw as possible um just different you know like not trying to follow in the footsteps of all these new up-and-coming bands um that generic sound yeah and that's the issue a lot of people think like oh if we just do what's popular you know right. make it big on that you know we'll make it forever but it's like no yeah it's you know, too those, flooded those bands fall out because there's too many of them yeah. yeah that's why we're drawn towards more bands like every time i die and stuff like that because they do things differently yeah. they think outside the box they don't do the cookie cutter you know hardcore mm -hmm. unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> you know there's not a lot of bands that do that anymore you right know, back yeah. when it first came out it, it got flooded and yeah it's, now it's just like uh, like you heard this band wasn't that the last band you just showed me? <laughs> <laughs> unfortunate yeah. yeah no this is completely different they have three guitarists <laughs> <laughs> the other one only had one <laughs> You know, four. Yeah. Uh, four, and they're two rhythms, two leads. Yeah. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was going to ask. Oh, yeah. Uh, how long have you all been playing? Like, guitar and drums and everything? Um, uh, well, I mean, I've been playing for... I'll be 25, so 10 years on guitar and playing bass before that, so like 11, 12 years. Nice. Yeah, I, I got my first drum kit and guitar whenever I was really little, like four, and then I just always banged around on it until I got good. I just 
I don't know. I probably got actually serious about playing when I was about 12. Awesome. Uh, so basically Ben just got one-upped. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's a little younger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not by much, but... No, we've been playing around the same time, because I remember like, the first band I got into like was around the same time that he got into his first... And I remember like Our Living Ghost, I remember when they came yeah. out and I was playing around then, so we... We played. didn't know each other very well no. back then. Yeah. And, like, yeah. Ghost Goes Ghost like... Days a little bit, because we played a couple shows together, and like we kind of just yeah. clicked a little bit, and then Definitely. You know, okay. from there. How long, how long have you been playing? I've been playing probably since I was around seven. Nice. But, uh, seriously playing probably 15 or so. Awesome. Yeah, about the same as Blake. I got my first guitar when I was like three or four, and just always had one, you know, and then... Uh, I think about seventh or eighth grade, I decided I just wanted to solidly play bass, you know, and right. I've been playing since about then, on and off. I mean, I played all through high school, graduated, then didn't really have a lot of people to jam with, so I put it down for a while, and then really this is the first band I've been in since about my sophomore year in high school. That's awesome. Yeah. A lot awesome. of people, they just, um, no offense, a lot of people just give up bass and Switch to guitar, but I mean, you played I mean, guitar I, first, right? Well, no, I played bass first. I started on bass because I wanted to play guitar. Right. You know, my brother and oh, everybody okay. else was like, oh, I'll start on bass. I was like, all right. Oh, okay. So I did, but then like I did that for like a year. I'm like, okay, this, yeah. is, this is just too easy. I want right. to do something different, you know, I want to change up, and I picked up guitar, and it was so I mean, from there. There's nothing wrong with playing bass. I, oh, no. I mean, bass is important. Very, very much. <laughs> so, like, I mean, the bass and the drums are like one of the most important things. Right. You know, everything has its own part to play. Right, and it's hard to find bass players. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's, hard to, it's hard to find any musician. Yeah, that's true. Like, there, there's a lot of people that can play but don't have the dedication. Yeah. You can definitely yeah. tell the difference between a bass player that, you know, was a guitarist and now he's just playing bass or a bass player that's just really strictly bass. They yeah, just have their own music. technique and style. Yeah. I don't know. Right. That's what I like about having Colt in the band. He, you know, he's a, he's a bassist. He, he never really got too far into guitar. Nah. Never picked up a guitar really until uh, high school. Got an acoustic, learned a few chords, and I was like, yeah, you know. They're like, eh. Give me back those thicker strings. Yeah. <laughs> I like that low man. He likes to beat on things and other things. I don't blame him. <laughs> there are times I miss playing bass. Like, yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's like, fun. It yeah, it fun. is fun to play. Like, it's not as stressful. You know I mean? well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Like even going from bass to rhythm, there's a lot of a lot more going on. Yeah. You know what I mean? But even then there's sometimes where the bass takes over completely. You know, like I like that about our music. <laughs> I feel like everybody has a time to shine. Not one instrument is more important than the other. Right. You know That's awesome. I mean? Which is weird because it's not usually like that, but I mean there are times that Adam's playing crazier things than I am, but it's not one that's better than the other, you know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. Has that perfect balance. Yep. Awesome. <clears throat> so uh, when you guys are on stage, do you guys, are, how do you normally deal with uh, equipment failures and stuff? <laughs> Just, we've been, uh, we've don't been, have them. Yes. <laughs> uh, I feel like we've been pretty lucky. That's in how you that, deal with them. In that aspect. <laughs> like we've had the power cut once because of us riding lights. I and hope that we don't jinx it. ourselves. So <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. It's but, been pretty good lately. <laughs> but yeah, basically just keep going, you know, unless it's something... Uh, just completely out of control where we can't keep going. We'll just keep going, even with one guitarist or just with the bass and drums and vocals, whatever we got to do. The show must go on and yeah, means. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, you pulled the whole thing out. <laughs> Sorry, it happens. You blew it. So there was, there's a malfunction right there. <laughs> that, that's how we dealt with it. I was to say, the only one that I can remember was me uh, doing exactly that, was pulling my cord out with my foot when we played with number 12. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, my feet are bad luck. <laughs> I, think more, I think it's more or less my shoes. I like being barefoot. I like playing barefoot. Time to go wireless. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> Those are fun. They're expensive. Definitely. Oh, yeah. Expensive. I, I had one one time. It's like a cheap one. It's like a hundred bucks. Auto Technia. Yeah, they're yeah. Not, yeah. No. I had one of them Navy ones. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. The cheap ones they don't last no. long because they're, they're just uh, well, they're not very strong frequencies. Right. You know, so you start picking up other things. Radios. <laughs> and yeah, it just doesn't we're, work well. We were playing a show one time and uh, it was coming through the amp like after the song. I was like, 
It's like a whole radio station. The guy was talking and everything. <laughs> I mean, even tubes will do that sometimes, yeah. though. Like, if you got a tube starting to go out or... Oh, yeah. Not right. Because we've had that happen yeah. before. They're like, you guys hear that? Sorry, <laughs> hearing some country on the... Hear some oldies. Yeah. <laughs> Especially in Attica. Pick up some random crap. Oh, there. yeah. Attica. Good old Attica. You know, there's a... There's a Mexican restaurant out there that's absolutely amazing. Yeah, agave azul. Yeah. 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 They, they actually have one in West Lafayette, don't they? Yeah, they got they there. I think they own they the one there. They have three or four locations. Got one in I know. I'm a big fan. I'm yeah. a very big fan. Yeah, I've been there. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the Chinese buffet there is pretty good, too, actually. Oh, man. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's straight away from small, that. <laughs> for a small town, it's not bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> Attica's <laughs> yeah, Attica's big enough to have a vape shop. I mean, come on now. Yeah, they got a vape shop true. there. Yeah. yeah, just open not too long it's, ago. Yeah, it'll it'll be closed in about a week. <laughs> Nobody vapes in there. I don't know. I've been saying, saying that for a couple and months and now. Dude, yeah. can we smoke cigarettes in here? No, it's vape only. <laughs> See ya. Why the hell are you guys open? <laughs> <laughs> this is bullshit. <bullshit>. shit. <laughs> So, uh, what, what do you guys think about uh, music streaming services and how they affect the record industry? Um, I mean, I'm thankful for what you guys do. You know, that's that's well, awesome. You. Uh, I definitely appreciate you guys helping locals get the name out. Um, this is probably our first time yeah. doing this. Uh, I mean, in general, I think if the streaming things don't hurt industry at all yeah i mean i mean like even like spotify you know right. like i'm a strong believer in spotify you know you pay a monthly premium you know the bands that you listen to get a certain percentage mm -hmm. you know what i mean so like you're paying for it you know and it's not a whole lot but you have everything at your fingertips right you know and you don't have to feel bad about downloading songs illegally anyway. right. True. You know I, mean? I, I always did i'm like man <laughs> which i Got to the point where I just I'll just go buy it. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, that's the thing. I, still, like, I still go buy hard copies of albums. If I, yeah, you know, yeah I do that every once in a while too. Yeah, I'll, just I'll, depends. Yeah. yeah, if I really love them, definitely I'll get that new album on physical copy. Right. It's nice hearing a variety of things, and then if you like that band that pops up on Spotify or Pandora, right. you can go buy the album. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's then the it, thing. it'll suggest new things. Well, like, like oh, yeah, yeah. Spotify's discovery is amazing. Yeah, I've seen a lot of underground bands pop up. You know, just because of the things I listen to, uh -huh. they're rel relevant to a certain band that I listen to, and they're like, "Oh, listen to this," and like, so they only have four thousand views on their songs, and you right. find all these little bands. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, like, they cater to everybody, not just the big bands. Yeah, you know I mean? like that. That's definitely awesome. I mean, I'm all for streaming because, uh, like you said, it's easier to get heard. Yeah, it really yeah, is. Yeah, you don't have to get someone to actually go buy your CD. Right. Just like, hey, click this. Yeah, and listen definitely. To it. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. even then, like... Uh, if you like it, go, go check it out more. I mean, digital it. sales, mm -hmm. I feel like, are becoming more popular. You know, mm -hmm. like, everything is digital now. It's, oh, yeah. Nothing is hardback anymore, or, like, vinyl. Yeah. You know I mean, it's... For one, it's just more expensive. You know, like, it's way more expensive to get physical CDs. Yeah, because you got to pay for pay. The, the CD, the packaging, yeah, and like, all that. Yeah, and you go, like, CD Baby and pay a, a flat fee, and then everything's everywhere. Yeah. You, know, you get a certain percentage of it. It's just a lot more convenient, I feel like. And then, I mean, they'll do, like, hardbacks as well, but it's more expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, like, that's the thing. I'm not against CDs by any means. They are collectibles. Right. right. You know what I mean? Like, you can't physically touch... <laughs> digital copies. That's yeah. the only bad thing about the digital stuff is like you don't if get you the don't pay and stuff. for Spotify right. anymore, like you say you have Spotify for two years, and then you say I don't want to buy it anymore. Well, there goes all the music that you had collected. Yeah, and it is it's kind like, of. Well, you just pay for it again. <laughs> yeah, but, and you got to like, what was that one band that I had on Spotify? <laughs> like I just <laughs> lost it. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, you have that, but that's the only downside I see to it. Even though I don't, I use. I don't use, or I don't buy CDs anymore. I use the streaming services more than anything. I mean, I, haven't, I can't remember the last time I bought a CD. Yeah, I just use <laughs> Apple Music. Yeah. Yeah, which is I'm not, I just bought one the other day. I'm not with the times. I don't have any of that stuff, honestly. <laughs> I don't go to the store anymore. Like, I don't go to Best Buy anymore and, like, look at CDs. Like, because I'm on my computer and I see it. You have everything so, at your fingertips. Yeah, so I'm yeah. just like, I might as well just get it here <laughs> like, yeah, instead of going to the store. That. Well, if you go to the store, like the CD section is so small now compared to what it used to oh, be. Oh, yeah. really? So, I mean, you're, there's nothing really there. It's a digital age. I'm sure it'll yeah. get to a point where it's like just not even a thing. What's a record store? You yeah. know, like yeah. that's not going to... 
I don't, we'll I, be like back in my day. <laughs> yeah. Are they still open in the mall? That one. Uh, Fye. Fye. Yeah. Yeah. Still there. I'm mm -hmm. happy to see that uh, J and L Records is still open. I love oh, yeah. going to J and L. Man. Pretty cool. I think that place has been there for a long oh, time. Yeah. I don't think it's gonna go. Yeah. Yeah. That's one of the very few places you can still go through and find vinyls old. Yeah. Bands well, I mean, and, stuff, and yeah. plus they even support local musicians. Like if you have oh, CDs, they? like hardback CDs with barcodes on them and stuff, they'll sell them there. Oh wow. Um, even. Uh, Vons mm -hmm. uh, yeah. up on Chauncey Hill, they have a local section. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. Hmm. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I have to check that out. Yeah, I mean, there's not always a lot of good stuff there. But, right, but yeah. it's still pretty cool. <laughs> For the most part, there's really not a lot of bands around here in general, not even just in the hardcore scene, you know. Yeah, like, that's true. In general, you don't have much, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. More room for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Do you guys have shared, shared the stage with some uh, well-known bands? You know, do you have any good stories about that, or how was the experience? Well, I mean, number 12 was great. I mean, yeah. it was kind of crappy how the bands dropped out, but then on the other hand, it was kind of cool. It was just us and the number 12. Yeah. That was, pretty, that was <laughs> yeah. a pretty honoring feeling. I mean, That's pretty cool. I've been listening to the number 12 since I was probably 13. and Oh, yeah. Yeah, most of us are pretty big fans of them. Um, yeah, that, was, that was definitely my favorite... Uh, show we play with a bigger headliner yeah watching those guys sound check and just jam out and have fun man it was really Kirk. cool i mean and plus they were a three-piece like oh really or four four yeah i guess four. they were four piece they didn't have another guitar player it's just oh. the one well yeah they used to have two vocalists yeah. too um wasn't it one of the guitar players that did it i can't remember anymore. i think they, they actually, actually had, had two, two front men i couldn't yeah. remember if it was like that or not yeah i think you're right i think it was two different ones they were great I'm excited for their new album to come out. I don't know when if they've released a date for it yet, but they were talking about it when we were playing with yeah, them. Yeah, oh yeah. Long. Plus, so you I guys get to like talk to them. Oh yeah, everything. I mean, mm -hmm. I got to talk to the guitar player and stuff. Like nice. they have a real strong, you know, New York accent. Oh yeah. It's hard to understand him, but it was really cool to just hang out. Yeah, they're right. really down to earth. Yeah, they were. And then their sound tech guy was like talking all about us, like you know we're, we've been on tour and you're like the first local band we played them with that's actually any good. <laughs> I was just, I was like, well, I'll take that as a compliment. You're like, I'm so sure about you're that. You're like, that's cool, man. You walk away, yes. <laughs> yeah. Take us on tour with you. Yeah. yeah. Just take me with you. <laughs> I mean, they were one of those bands I never thought would get back together. Honestly. Oh yeah. 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 I mean, because they had a decent following, but yeah, that kind of music, unfortunately, that math metal. Uh -huh. core type stuff it yeah. never got popular <laughs> like <it laughs> right did, but it was like musicians bands mm -hmm. you know, like yeah you go to a show and you see nothing but guitar players just watching in awe <laughs> yeah over there drooling or i mean yeah. i guess drummers too because i know like oh they're yeah amazing. they're just amazing man yeah. all of them are yeah. yeah they're all very well-rounded musicians yeah that's yeah that's definitely it not too many people can just sit there and groove to it if they don't play music because the time signature is changing like every two minutes or whatever so basically jazz metal yeah well, it's, I, mean, that, I love exactly that stuff though it it's crazy and like dillinger escape plan oh yeah like i mean it's hard to think that music's been it's been around since 97 was when right. dillinger escape plan came out and they were like one of the first yeah they're the og that's like yeah 20 years ago <laughs> holy crap i can go back and listen to calculate infinity and it still holds up today like that's a long time ago like 18 uh, 20 years ago it was 18 uh, for that <laughs> that one came out in 99 Right. The same year that uh, like Slipknot's first album, main album came out. Yeah, you know, I feel like that was a good year for music, for metal especially. Like it changed a lot of things. Yeah, and then like Limp Biscuit came along and <laughs> <laughs> changed everyone's lives. <laughs> I mean, like I don't know, their first album wasn't terrible. Oh, Ben. But... <laughs> you can't lie. You can't. Hey, say that okay, you have... I will hey. say I will bump my head to Nookie just because I this know is... I know the struggles. This is a house I'll of Durst, okay? <laughs> Fred Durst. Last yeah, Halloween, he was Fred Durst. Uh, <laughs> he even had the little patch and everything. <laughs> That's great. I seen Limp Biscuit once. And Fred Durst got knocked out with an elbow. That's he, awesome. He, out, he jumped out. Actually, he was throwing elbows, and a dude went, <laughs> Down goes Durst. He went goes. down a lot, didn't he? Yeah. I think he thought he was he was a badass, and he just kept singing about it and telling himself that he was just, I mean, it, I am tough. There's a reason why Woodstock doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. yeah. When they had Woodstock in 99, I think was the last year they brought yeah. it back. And they, like, literally destroyed 
everything. Yeah, like they the, ruined it. The back like camera stands and stuff were demolished. Like oh, the sound shit. stuff was demolished. There like, were people, fires. People <laughs> were like crowd surfing on plywood. Like I think they started crazy. tearing the stage down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, Woodstock '99 got out of hand. Yep. <laughs> I, I remember awesome. seeing that on the news, and then I was like, "What? What the hell's? What? What is this?" My brother's like, "Shut up." This is important. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the 50th anniversary year. Yeah, it's coming Woodstock. up. Yeah, they. I saw an article. It's gonna be like uh, where Woodstock was held. They're making it like a national thing. Oh yeah, so they're making it like a historic. Yeah, historic, yeah. historic site. It's just a field, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just a big ass There's field. Nothing there. <laughs> this is where about. 30,000 people all ate LSD and had wild sex. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty accurate. This is where the color of the mud actually changed. <laughs> you ever seen white mud? Mm. You did it Woodstock. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what, what could you guys say is your favorite venue that you've played? Well, off yet theater, we just played. Yeah, yeah, really nice. that was really cool. yeah. What was that basement we played in Indy that's not uh, there anymore? What? You remember? It was a little bar. Oh, oh uh, fifth and a quarter? Yeah. Fifth quarter fifth round. Quarter fifth round. Quarter that round. place yeah, was yeah, sweet. Round. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. Um, was, I heard a lot of people did like that place. It, it was. was. It's sad that it closed. Yeah, yeah. I got to play one time. But hey, you played it. Yeah. That's right, yeah. <laughs> but that was a, well, I mean, that was a horrible show, but it was a good venue. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, that was the last show that Trevor, our old guitar player, played with us. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 Well, actually, he didn't play that one. That was supposed to be his last show, and uh, he didn't show up. And uh, that was Muncie, yeah. Ben. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, that was Muncie. What? what? Wrong. No, was he there at that show? No, he didn't show up to that. Fit. Yeah, he did. I don't know. Oh, yeah. yeah, he did. Mm. Oh well. <laughs> Maybe he did. I don't, know. I, could <laughs> I don't know. He did do that though. I'm one of them. Muncie, because I got blackout drunk and chased. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it that we played out in Muncie? Yeah. I threw it in the park. Valhalla. That place was pretty cool too, though. Yeah. Valhalla. Oh Muncie. yeah, you're right. Because we played with barricades. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. I, I just that yeah. Now. I didn't really remember that show very well because <laughs> I let not too many. People were there. I think it was only bands watching bands. It wasn't yeah. that memorable, you know, one of those. I know right. why I don't remember it. It's because I was very drunk and puking in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> you were drinking Rob, uh, Red Bull and vodka that night, weren't you? I'm drinking Red Bull and vodka a lot. <laughs> <laughs> go to. Go to. Get you drunk very fast, and then as soon yes, as the countdown happens, it's, you're just gone. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> That's actually become my go to because of him. Wake up! Yeah, wake me up when we hit home. <laughs> like, what time is it? Uh, it's one a.m. All right, I gotta get drunk in fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it works. I used to do it too <laughs> at the bar. <laughs> too expensive to go to the bar. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't uh, no, go. actually, some places you pay like seven dollars for your first one. Everyone after that's two fifty. Remember that place we was at in Indy and the Broad like, Ripple? Yeah, mm -hmm. oh, and it was the greatest. Sense. It was like, are you kidding me, man? You buy your first Red Bull, the rest of them? I'll so be here all night. Yeah, I'll awesome. <laughs> <laughs> be back in five minutes, man. <laughs> <laughs> huh? Yeah, that was, that was actually the first show I played with King's Gambit was that night and. Me and Blake went out to Broad Ripple and got hammered. That's that's fun. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I've been to Broad Ripple once. That's yeah, all I needed. Me too. Yeah, it was uh, very. You get busy. so drunk. Oh yeah, it's insane. <laughs> so fun. Yeah, I have unfortunately not done that yet. Well, you got to do it at least once. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to do it again. That was really fun. He's brave. <laughs> oh, I'm very brave. <laughs> so you guys brought a. Uh, song with us or brought a song with you to feature or yeah you, know, you want to tell us a little bit about it <laughs> well I mean we've changed it a little bit since then and it's a little slower than it should be but for the most part it's the same um, I mean I couldn't really tell you much that'd be an Anthony question to be honest yeah I mean, wow. you know, like exactly. he does write all the lyrics you right know I mean? and even then you could read them sometimes and be like not Getting what he thought, you know, like right. all the double meanings in there and the things that make you think that it's like if you really want to know the 100% answer, it's like you got to ask him. Right. And you could ask him a thousand times and still probably forget something because it's usually very <laughs> intricate. <in -depth>. Yeah. <laughs> was that a, did you guys 
Was that a collective writing process for that one? Um, well, I mean, between him and Blake, yeah. And I wrote some of the bass parts for it. Um, but other than that... That was probably one of the first of the newer set of songs that we wrote. We've had that one in our in our arsenal for a while now. Yeah, it was actually on the EP that we did. Mm -hmm. Was it on? No, it wasn't on the one that you guys did when, uh, that I didn't go to. But it was the one that we all went to. Yeah. Um, Relatively complex. Uh, we didn't release it. Uh, we only re released a couple songs. Just like the EP we did before that. Well, I mean, just <laughs> lack of preparation, and then once we got time, just technical difficulties really drug us back, and we didn't get to reamp like we wanted to, and just basically get the tone and it exactly how we wanted mm -hmm. with the money that we had, which wasn't much. Yeah, so, that, uh, that's expensive. <laughs> so we're just we're basically really, really taking our time on this next venture to make sure it's up to par before we release it. You know. Right. I mean, a lot of what happens is, like, this last time we went all to the studio, well, me and other than Adam, um, and when we got there, we had all the scratch tracks, um, but when we got there, they didn't line up in the program they were using, uh -huh. so we wasted all that time uh, for nothing, so then we had to go back and redo the scratch tracks. Um, we only had, what, three Damn. days? Um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure we couldn't get a guitar to stop squealing for, like, two hours. Uh so I don't even remember what we did about that. Maybe I switch don't guitars. I, I don't know, but <laughs> so or he they added something to the sound room. Yeah, I don't know. We we didn't have the best of luck with that studio venture. Yeah, I wasn't there for any of that. I guess I was working when you guys were having the difficulties. Oh yeah, I mean, because you yeah. tracking drums and I was like, oh hell yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> <That's> going <laughs> great. We had definitely already been there for a while, um, and then we ended up having to do all the scratch tracks by song. So that took a right. lot of time, and then yeah. like we were supposed to have one whole day for reamping and like you know mastering and all that, but it ended up gotten the last day we were still doing the finishing on the recordings and stuff. So Damn. it was kind of hard to get the sound that we wanted, you know. Right. I feel like all of us have a little bit more understanding on tone and frequencies, especially Anthony. I know he's done a lot of research on that, mm -hmm. um, and, and just kind of learn more that way. We all kind of put our input in. Right. And say, this is what we want to sound like. You know, cause before that, it was like, oh, well, we want to sound like this, but we don't want to sound exactly like that. And then they would be like, well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't like that, but just a little bit different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's hard to, like, get what you want if you don't know how to explain right. what you want. So that's why, like, this time around, we're going to try to do as much of it by ourselves as possible to save the money on the time that it would take right. to get it perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, and then basically have it sent off and mixed and mastered. So that three days, we could be there mixing and mastering it instead of the three days to record and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So it'll cut costs down there you a go. lot. Because drums and guitar and bass will be it recorded. Out. Yeah, it's just a matter of getting your tone. Awesome. Nice. Well, let's check out the song. It's called New Order. Mm -hmm. Let's take a listen.
<laughs> so you guys have a. Uh, you were talking about the uh, your full length that's going to be coming out. Do you guys have all the songs written and ready to go, or still yeah. still working them out and well, we tweaking have, them and getting them where you want them to be? We have like what thirteen. Well, we have more than thirteen songs we could play, but it was originally supposed to be twelve, I believe, but now it's down to. 10, I believe is what it's down to. 11, actually. Or is it 11? Yeah. You only take one out? Yeah, we yeah we only weeded one out. That's but bad. Yeah, everything's where we want it for the most part. It's just really, really getting it solid. And, you know, now we're, we're in the process of making all the click tracks and really thinking about tempos and everything before we get there so we know that we're prepared. Um, Not trying to get blindsided this time. Right. <clears throat> Hopefully no issues. <laughs> so, um, what way do you guys like promote your band and shows and stuff? Like, um, Facebook a lot, uh, Twitter. Um, other than that, really not a whole lot. Really um, tell friends. Yeah, I mean, it's mostly we're, just by word of mouth. We're pretty much just now getting back in the game, playing shows for the most part because just all the member changes has set us back drastically. Right. We've we've had to quit. I couldn't even count how many times playing shows because of getting new members in and teaching them. Mm -hmm. So we're just now, we just now have this solid lineup again and have a, uh, you know, everything's tight as it should be. So now we're working on getting shows, um, but hopefully we'll be doing a lot more in the future now. Yeah, I mean, I know we're going to be focusing a lot more time on the album. Yeah. I mean, like, that's going to be our main thing, but... It's not that we won't play shows, obviously. You know what I mean? We just kind of slow down looking for them. You know what I mean? We have people that ask us to play, and it's like, well, yeah, we'll do that. But right. yeah. other than that, we need to focus a lot. Because it's like, at a certain point, we don't really have anything to really push. You know, we do have songs up, but that's not even what we really sound like anymore. Like, we still play those songs, but they're different now. Yeah, because... You know, we've changed up parts. <laughs> we'll play shows, and, you know, we'll... We'll get people coming up to us like, yeah, I wish you guys had CDs. And I'm like, yeah, we do too. We, <laughs> we, we wish we could give you something to go home with. But yeah, it's, it's kind of Here's a, a flash bummer. drive. Yeah. <laughs> huh. That's the thing. you got to be careful to give people like what's not what we want. You know, that's why we haven't done any of the other EPs yet. And so we'll get it back and it's like, well, yeah, that sounds all right, but it sounds like everything else. You know, it doesn't right. have that distinct tone that distinct sound that puts you different than everybody else you know so it's like we don't don't we don't feel comfortable putting that out so like to have something to put out would be really nice yeah you know i mean because then you have something to fall back on you know like you can sell cds or shows like when we play the lafayette music theater like we had five different people within five minutes five minutes like do you guys have cds and it's like no <laughs> we have no. some stickers <laughs> shirts <laughs> that's about it hats Right on a piece of paper. Here's our link. Thirty five dollars. Yeah, I mean, you guys could, um, after you get the full length, you could, uh, you know, you could make samples, like only like one or two songs, and uh, you know, just burn them onto a CD and then hand those out for free. Yeah, and then and that's then, that is smart, you know, and we, we probably could have done that with what we have, but right. It's still that fine line of, do you want to release crap? Right. You know what I mean? Like, the songs that we put up weren't bad. Not right. horribly bad. There was some issues, obviously, but... I mean, um, you you know the issues, but people yeah, listening to it, um, they won't know. Yeah, basically. Um, we probably could have released that as something free, but... Yeah. We all kind of just agreed to put just a couple songs up. Right. You know, just to have something up so people can't hear it. Um, but it is kind of a difference, you know, because we still do have a couple of the old ones from Pond up there. So if you listen to those... Yeah, I listen to all of them. And then you listen to the <laughs> other two, you know, New, or New Order and Sacrologic, mm -hmm. they're completely different. You know, they right. have some similarities, but the new ones are a lot heavier. And then, you know, you have the new stuff that we're writing now, and it's even that much more. So it's kind of like... You guys are maturing. Yeah, and that's why we kind of had to go back and fix certain songs, mm -hmm. you know, certain parts that weren't up to par, you know. Right. So the core of the song is still the same. Like interjection as one of them that we've had for a long time, and we just completely revamped it. Yeah. Like the whole intro to it, you know, a lot of the mm -hmm. other parts, like the main parts are there, but everything else is different. You know what I mean? So awesome. Yeah, that's the one thing I will say. I'm glad, you know, that we didn't release some of that. Is we've had all this time to really think about those songs on another perspective, 
And now that song in particular is twice as good in my opinion, and I'm really happy to release it. Oh yeah, that's probably one of the ones I'm really excited to hear like that. Because we have tracked it before, but it did not sound like that. Right. <laughs> Didn't sound nearly as good. Um, but, you know, it takes time. Yeah, that's true. Um, do you guys have any uh, dreams or goals as a band? <laughs> uh, I mean, I know one of mine is just to like go out on the road. At yeah. least for a week. <laughs> Go do a tour. Like, no, yeah, definitely. To at least have it out there. You know what I mean? Like, see what happens from Right. Me. I feel like we've kind of sold ourselves short. You know, like, we have the potential. We just haven't, like, musicians are a lot big part of it. We've been through three, four, depending on how you want to count it. Right. In the last year, year and a half. You know, like, it's been rough to keep that going. Yeah, yeah that's but, understandable. We do have the potential, I feel like. You know, like, we, we do do something different. Mm -hmm. You know, we, there, you can definitely tell similarities in music that we listen to, but I can't, and I would be honest, I mean, I've been in other bands that sound like other bands, I can't deny that. You right. Know what I mean? But this is something different. I'm very proud of it. And that, that kind of answers a question I was thinking to myself last night. I was listening to you guys, and I'm like, like, why why don't they play more shows? But from what you've told me through the the member changes and everything, and now I get it. Yeah. But now I also know that you guys do want to do stuff like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And right now, it's just, like I said, having somebody to push. You know, like right. we're still looking to play shows, but if we can focus more time on releasing, get, like getting an album that we like right, and recorded and released, then other things like music videos and more shirt designs and other things like mm -hmm. that can be out there. Right. You know? Yeah, you know, like One we step can, at a time. If we could set up a little tour if we wanted to. I mean, depending if uh, people's work schedules would fit, but, you know, the way we look at it is it's a lot more important for us to really work on this album so that the music speaks for itself mm -hmm. than just going out on the road with nothing to push and you know yeah. Uh, yeah, that's you can do that as much as you want but without a good album you're not going to have anything to sell these people and you mm -hmm. really really grab people's attention that they can keep keep that as long as they want and listen to it at home you know you can you can hear a band at a show live but that doesn't mean you're going to remember their songs right you know what I mean? So yeah, once you guys get that full length, you guys can really start pushing. Oh, yeah. Plus, it just helps because, yeah, especially with like digital sales or even like if you buy the album mm -hmm. hardback online, you know, like it gives you the area of where it's selling. You know, so when you do want to go on a tour, when you have so many listeners and you know you can afford to do it, you have an area of where like, okay, this is where it's selling here, this is where it's selling here, and it gives you somewhere to go where you know that you're right. gonna have a crowd come out there that appreciates what you do. So, I mean, it just helps having the music, you know. Yeah. We went for periods of time where it's like, well, we don't have the means to do this, so we're just going to play shows a whole bunch. Yeah. But then it doesn't get you anywhere. Right. Because you know? like he said, then nobody has anything to take home to remember you after you're done. And unless you do something stupid, like break stuff, which you can't afford, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not going to be noticed, and that's the thing. Like, <laughs> if you don't have the music, you got to do something crazy, and we can't afford that. So right. it's like, that's just... Uh, <laughs> Try to get the music out there. See, when you said break stuff, and I know you thought of them too, we used to play with a band called Advise Roosevelt, and they would come in with like lamps and they would swing them around, just break everything and <laughs> just get kicked out immediately. <laughs> <laughs> but it was hilarious every time. But I bet everybody that was there remembered who they were. They oh, did. Yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> did. <laughs> it's not something you forget. Right. I, mean, like, I feel like there's a time and a place for things like that. Um, yeah, but when you're first starting out, or you've well, been together and you haven't made it, definitely not a good idea. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't think you should do that, regardless. But I mean, uh, yeah. most of the people that do that though have like dummy cabs and guitars they get for free. Well, they weren't breaking like, their um, stuff; they were breaking other people's yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's the difference. Different. Yeah, that's they were like picking up the, the floor line. monitors and like throwing them. And yeah, that's not cool. Yeah, yeah. No, destroy your own equipment. If you're gonna yeah. yeah, that's how you get kicked out of places in yeah. band. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't matter if you remember then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Can't play anywhere. So do you guys have any advice you'd give uh, up-and-coming musicians or bands? Keep grinding. Yeah. Keep grinding. I mean, mm -hmm. Just do what you can. Don't give up. Like, it's not an easy road by any means. You know, if you're right. really dedicated and you really want to do it, you have to give up a lot of time that you could be putting into other things. Mm -hmm. Like even friendships and stuff sometimes unless it's the group of people that you're playing with yeah. like i can honestly say that my my only friends really are, is the bank so i don't have any time for anything right. else you know like i have other people i talk to i guess but not 
like twice a week like I do for right. band practice and stuff <laughs> like that. So that's and good. Step out of your comfort zone, you know. Definitely. Can't stay in your comfort zone your whole life. Get out there and do everything that you want to do. That's true. And definitely don't stick to one genre. Like just you know, even playing just cover songs of different genres of music. You know, I mean that's something you learn a lot of things just about just jamming and bouncing off other instruments. Is well, I didn't mm -hmm. realize. You know, this would work here or something along those lines. You know, so I'd say make the music for yourself. Yeah. Maybe. Make sure you guys like it. Mm -hmm. Right. Don't be like, I ah, just hope other people like it and yeah. start showing up. We're going to go out and play pop songs <laughs> <laughs> on guitars. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the thing with pop, though, like, not all pop music's bad, though. Right. There's right. there's a lot of good pop music. It's just hard to find. <laughs> like, like JT. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Timberlake. <laughs> the thing is, is, he actually is very talented. Right. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. He's super I can't talented. Deny that. Shoot and tie. That's a good whole too, album, man. though. Really, 2020 vision was great. I can't deny that. Like, right. I mean, when pipes. it's good, it's good, right? Yeah, you can't. Um, I can't deny that. I remember so, right. the pipes and the moves. <laughs> Video I was watching of him play guitar with some. Who was he playing with? It was another. I can't remember now, but he was up playing guitar with somebody like. I want John Mayer, was it, or somebody like that? Oh, I do love John Mayer, though. I, I can't remember what it was, but it was like, <laughs> it was <John>? awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he was also in that movie, uh, Inside Lewin Davis. Yeah, that's pretty good. If you, if you guys have never seen that movie, that movie's great. I've never seen it. Uh, yeah, it has uh, Justin Timberlake's in it. The guy that plays Kylo Ren is in it from the newest Star Wars. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Oscar Isaac's in it. It's a great movie. It's all about music. It's like folk music. Oh, yeah, John check. Goodman's in it too. So. Oh, awesome! It's really good. It's a Coen Brothers movie, so the same guys that did like Fargo and right. uh, No Country for Old Men and stuff like that. Oh yeah. But it's really good, really good. Um, got off topic there. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, tell us about your upcoming show. You got an upcoming show, right? In we July. Have a couple, actually. Oh, do you? Yeah. Um, well, actually, we might have one in June too. I don't need to. I was gonna say something about that what? one. What? Actually, <laughs> they're they're all three in July. Well, yeah. Don't worry, I'll pull the schedule up real quick. <laughs> no, I mean, He's like, one, I got it. Well, I think it's July fifteenth, the twenty seventh and eighth. Close. Twenty sixth and twenty seventh. Very close. One's the 29th, right? Yeah, July 15th. So 20th, 20th. We're playing a, a house show in Indy. Um, Ooh. And July uh, 28th, we're playing at the Gear. And July 29th, we're playing Fried Fest out in Converse. Yeah, Fried Fest. I heard that's a huge. Oh, yeah. Huge like 20 some bands or something? Yeah, yeah 22 bands right now. Um, 22. It starts at 11 30 in the morning and ends at 4 in the morning the next day. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you can like camp there too, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah free camping. Included. Wow. $10 for everything. Um, heard some rumors there might actually be fried food there this year. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there might be fried food. In, in the works, apparently. <laughs> Get there and it's like. Fried okra and <laughs> fried I'd be, chicken. I'd be down on that. Yeah, I like fried okra. <laughs> There'll definitely be alcohol. Fried zucchini oh, oh yeah, it's just a different kind of fried. You're thinking like chicken and stuff, but you get there and it's all veggies. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, one last question: uh, What are you guys listening to currently? Oh God. I've been listening to a lot of Manchester Orchestra lately. <laughs> oh, yeah. The only thing is, I about guarantee all of us would say n not metal. Uh, like, I listen to some, but... Bes besides, like, Every Time I Die's new album and Knocked Loose's yeah, new album, Code yeah, Orange. 68's yeah. album. Yeah. I haven't listened to that. Really good. 68's album. Listen I just listened to that the other day. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Listen to a lot of hip-hop and indie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hip -hop. Uh, Kendrick's new album is yeah. good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, yeah, I love that. Um, other than that... I mean, a lot I've been of listening rap. to a lot of Alice in Chains lately. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some throwbacks. Nirvana. Yeah. I saw you put a lot on Facebook the other day. Like, I'm rocking out to Alice in Chains. I'm loving it. it. I still listen to Led Zeppelin yeah, all the too. time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I have Dark Side of the Moon in my van right now that I listen to probably at least twice a week. Yeah, there you go. To you, from work. you can't kick the classics. It's no, like, you can't. Uh, they'll always be good. The yeah, funny thing is, is like I'm probably, me and Anthony, the only ones that weren't raised like that. Yeah. Like we don't like they're all talking about like Led Zeppelin and all that and we're just like 
don't know about that. Boom. AC, that, AC that, DC like, with Bon Scott. Oh, man. It's not that I have a problem with him personally. Like, I respect right. him as musicians, but it's just not what I was raised on. Right. You know, like, rockabilly and punk. Uh, like, uh, runs in the blood. Yeah. <laughs> My dad's always been a big rocker and metalhead, so he, he raised me on... <laughs> a lot of like Kiss, <laughs> Metallica, right? Led Zeppelin, stuff like that. I was raised on uh, Merle Haggard. There you Jack go. Williams Jr., Conway Twitty. The good of, country, right? Of, yeah, Rebel Country. Yeah. yeah. They were actually still talking about something and not drinking out of solo cups. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I. Drive trucks. I hear country. Stadium now. country, that's the new stuff now. Yeah, I hear that garbage now and it's just like. Yeah, this is glorified pop music. bullshit. Yeah, yeah definitely. There's, there's nothing country about you people. You know, <laughs> if you went fishing, you know, you probably not want to touch the worms. Right. <laughs> they bought a Ford shirt, so it yeah. counts. <laughs> yeah. I am probably more country than most country singers out there, and I am a diehard metal and you know, uh, yeah, I'm just a huge metalhead and a hippie. So. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Um, you can find uh, King's Gambit on Facebook. Find him on SoundCloud. Uh, you guys have any other social media? Twitter, yeah, right? Yeah, you guys are on Twitter. Twitter. We have a YouTube channel too. I think we got an Instagram, Instagram too. Yeah, we have Instagram. Do you? I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if there's been any posts lately, but I don't there's know definitely if one there. Our social media. Well, you know, we, we tend to slack on it from time to time. Yeah, yeah. Now that we're getting back in the groove, we'll you know we promise Revamp to post a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. Try to keep things going, not be so much dead space. Yeah. Unfortunately, awesome. if you go on our Facebook, there was a period of time where like nothing was nothing there. was there. <laughs> it's like didn't nothing. have anything to say. Like yeah, <laughs> we're still teaching this new guy. <laughs> be a couple weeks or better, a couple months. Nice. All right. Well, you can find him on Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram. Question. Uh, SoundCloud. Uh, you can go on SoundCloud, listen to some of their older stuff. The newer stuff is coming out probably soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully by the beginning of the year. There you go. It's not too far off. No, no. just can't rush it. So, no, yeah. definitely check them out. Give them a follow. Give them a like. And uh, just want to thanks you guys for coming out. Well, thanks thank for you. having us. Yeah, for sure. so, yeah, no we problem. definitely appreciate you. <laughs> come out. No problem. Anytime. Anytime. Welcome back. Welcome back. Just talked to King's Gambit. That was a good interview. Yeah, it was fun. I always like doing the. Uh, in the one on yeah, the in person one on one interviews, two on four interviews, and the sweat locker that we is oh, our God. our podcasting. It gets so hot up here. Yeah, we should just get some like ice, and like we should get some buckets and just put our feet in water. <laughs> Keep us cool. I just need to figure out how to put this booster fan in for the AC. Ah, uh, I got it. We should get a kiddie pool, put it underneath the table. Totally. Yeah, I'm gonna drop all this electrical equipment into it. Definitely. Yeah. No, I mean, it'd be around. Off to the left. Okay. <laughs> I'll get my own kiddie pool. Get your own fucking kiddie pool. <laughs> it's a great idea. <laughs> Keeps you cool. Yeah. <laughs> Keeps you cool. I think we should just turn it into a sauna in here. There we go. Make everybody strip down, put a towel on. Like, look, it's going to be, it's going to feel weird. Might as well get weird. <laughs> Let's get weird. <laughs> Let's get weird. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> uh, what's your name? Can I have your number? <laughs> But yeah, thanks for listening. Um, you can find us Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, yes. YouTube, all that. YouTube, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all around music Yes, I don't think I posted the last episode on there. No, you didn't. I didn't do that. Yeah, tonight. <laughs> um, yeah, get on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Stitcher, all that good stuff. Leave us a review. Please anywhere, do. Everywhere. Please do. All around music it's gonna get better we have <laughs> so much in store for you guys to listen to so yeah this was one of very many interviews that we have coming up mm -hmm. we have another one next week and then the week after that and, and after, that. after that so the next two and a half months here soon i'm gonna start booking for september i'm gonna mm -hmm. let a month go by so it doesn't feel like it's so far out <laughs> we got uh next week is oh yes next week uh mike bradley yeah. will be back in the studio yeah is uh I think he said his full length is gonna be coming out soon. So he just put a music video out yes, there. Yes, he did. So check it out. It's on our Facebook page. We shared the link, so check that out. Uh but yeah, he'll be back in the studio. Uh from what he was telling me, he wants to do a live session, so he'll be uh dropping some lines, I guess. 
Yeah. We'll see. So that'll be cool. See him next week. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out.